there ultrasound machines available for diagnostic purposes in physiotherapy? Yes, so uh, thank you Aziz for your question. Mm. Um, um, yeah, first of all, it's important to understand that uh, we always need to follow rules and regulations in a country uh, around with, with the usage of ultrasounds. For example, in physiotherapy, it's not always allowed to make a diagnosis. In some countries, mm. it's, uh, it's, it's important that uh, the radiologist makes the official diagnosis um, and uh, that the physiotherapist is, is, an, is allowed to see with ultrasound. So they can definitely use ultrasound. Also for the, um, the therapeutic ultrasound guidance reasons I, I explained uh, in the in the webinar earlier um, but the physio can make a connective tissue evaluation but sometimes it's not allowed to make a proper or a real diagnosis um, so always follow the rules in your own country for example i know that in um in, 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 in switzerland it's a little bit different difficult to make a, a diagnosis as a physio in Italy as well, yeah. but in the UK or in the Netherlands, it's not so much of a problem. Um, but this only is for the physiotherapy profession. But to answer Aziz's question, if we go to the next slide, then uh, this is uh, showing a few systems. Um, and you can see these systems are a little bit uh, laptop-like models. Uh, which are being used uh, a lot in uh, in, uh, in physiotherapy, and th this is, and it's not the brands. I, I just put the several brands uh, there. You can buy any brand, but it's more about how it looks like. Yeah? So it's a smaller system, a little bit like a computer, like a laptop. Uh, so these are being used in um, in physiotherapy at the moment, uh, in many cases. Um, if we go to the next slide then these are the systems that in many cases are being used in medicine, for example, in radiology and rheumatology. You can see that these uh, systems are bigger. Uh, they are also, I can tell you, uh, much more expensive. And uh, it's important to understand that in ultrasound, that roughly, uh, you could say that every euro or dollar uh, you spend, you buy also a certain diagnostic accuracy. So um, if you buy a cheaper machine, then this machine will have limitations if you buy uh, and compare to systems which are more expensive. Uh, compare it with buying a car. If you buy a Audi A1, it's cheaper than an Audi A8. Uh, it's much cheaper, but it has also limitations. And of course, uh, it, it, it's not as luxurious as the, as the most expensive car. Uh, and this is the same with ultrasound systems. So um, uh, if you have a budget, um, uh, then you should uh, buy the best machine possible for this budget. Um, and uh, But you have to know that this budget also brings you certain <clears throat> capabilities, but also limitations. Um, but that's OK. If you stick within the limitations of the machine, then you do OK, uh, but don't say things or don't make harsh comments about things that you can't see. Do you have a comment on that, Tommy? How, how, how do yeah, you I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very important topic. And I, you know, we, and in cardiology, uh, at least I get very many questions also, which system should I buy? You know, how much money should I spend? I think, you know, the, the topic is a very complex one. Um, um, I don't know if it's the same in MSK, but in cardiology, it's, it's not only a question of the quality, but it's also a question of which features you want to have. And, you know, we have millions of different features that uh, are promoted by the industry. I think it's also important to decide what you want to do with the machine. Uh, you might not even need these features and you can actually save a lot of costs if you just leave them out. I mean, if you don't need 3D, if you don't want to have, you know, techniques uh, such as speckle tracking, uh, you can still settle for very good quality. Uh, by just stripping down it. Sometimes you can still buy maybe the A8 uh, Audi, but maybe you might not have the sunroof and you might not have, you know, whatever uh, the uh, tanned uh, uh, sun, uh, shields. So, you know, this is also something to consider. And it's also important to consider what you want to use the machine for because uh, ultrasound is ultrasound. 
Um, the machines, however, differ with respect to which transducers you equip them with and also where their main focus is. So you will have scanners which are specifically dedicated to one area such as maybe cardiology or vascular or uh, you know, MSK. Uh, and sometimes you can also have a machine which is a very good overall machine where you can have good quality in all areas. So these are also issues to consider and then uh, you know, my suggestion always is, is just get the scanners in and just test them. The vendors are happy to bring them and spend time with uh, the uh, people who bring the scanner in, the vendors, uh, test them on uh, certain situations, the patient who is good to image and difficult to image and get your own feeling for it. Uh, that's how I would usually use and uh, me in cardiology I usually have a few things that I always look at and if I see uh, they work there then I know the machine is of good quality. Yeah, or uh, what I also say to people sometimes is uh, go to like uh, the Medica Fair in Dusseldorf or the Dubai Health uh, Fair or the RSNA in Chicago. Uh, all the vendors are together there uh, and you can test the systems. Or for example, go to the one to three Sonography Live event in Vienna. Uh, so you had beautiful systems uh, lined up there and uh, of all brands. So you can also test them, uh, yeah. test them there. Um, so, uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, I just wanted to point out that technology uh, is uh, rapidly advancing uh, and nowadays you also have these uh, handheld uh, devices, uh, tablets um, with attached to it a, a transducer, sometimes wired, sometimes without wire, wireless. Uh, and I think this is a very promising development, it's, uh, it's a much cheaper way uh, to, uh, to enter the field of uh, sonography. Uh, but um, uh, again, uh, the prices are, are much lower than the systems I showed you a minute ago, uh, and they also have limitations. But uh, these also these systems they have great capabilities in scanning the bigger structures and the bigger pathologies. So uh, it's, it's a promising development, and I think that uh, the the technology in the next decade is rapidly advancing and making the ultrasound available for for everybody yeah um, yeah the last yeah so the, maybe one one thing is that um so the diagnostic value of uh, msk ultrasound is uh, is uh, depending for a big part on the, on the system you have uh, but also for a big part depending on on you uh, the sonographer who should be trained uh, and uh, properly and we should have uh, lots of experience, uh, but it's also depending on the patient. Huh? So um, it's, uh, it's important to know that uh, some regions, anatomical regions, are uh, more difficult to scan than other regions. Uh, for example, uh, a, uh, uh, a ventral knee is, more, is much easier than a dorsal knee. Um, a ankle joint is much easier than a foot. Yeah? So this also determines certain diagnostic accuracy. Uh, but also the type of the patient is, uh, is, um, uh, is, 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 is important. For example, if you have a patient with lots of uh, a high BMI um, or a patient who is uh, older, then the clarity of the, 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 the image is getting less. Mm -hmm. um, on the other side, if you have a patient who is young and who is a little bit athletic, fit, then the image quality is a little bit better. So there are multiple variables who determine actually in a diagnostic process the, the diagnostic accuracy. Patient factors, uh, uh, equipment factors, but also definitely uh, the, the, the sonographer herself. Uh,